Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arius, and today we're going to be talking about the stock I am perhaps most bullish about in the short term, Arcturus Therapeutics. I'll give you a quick recap on what Arcturus just reported, but more importantly, I'll dig into what management said and implied on their conference call. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start out with Arcturus' COVID-19 vaccine. If you don't know what Arcturus is about, check out my previous new videos about them, which I linked in the description below. One gives a full breakdown of their technology and what advantages it gives them, and then the two other updates, much like this. This will serve as the fourth installment on Arcturus as they get closer every day to launching their COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Their current plan is to initiate a phase three trial sometime in Q2, which will seek emergency use authorization in the second half of 2021. They're planning for the dose to be five micrograms and of course a single shot, but this will be confirmed by the results of the phase two trial. On the call, CEO Joe Payne reminded us that by the time we are in the endemic phase, one-shot vaccines will be the only desirable type of vaccine. What is for those who got the adenovirus vaccine? vaccines like J&J, &J, which cannot be redosed, or if it's a former COVID patient who is boosting immunity, or if it's a general population who needs a booster shot to retain immunity and protect against new variants, a one-shot vaccine will be the only way to go. Another thing mentioned is that Arcturus is planning to lyophilize their vaccine, which basically means freeze-dry it, and then reconstitute it with water later on before injection. And this allows them to forego the expensive and hard-to-come-by cold-chain infrastructure, and will allow for their vaccine to see more distribution into less developed countries. If we look out to Q4 of 2021, 22 and 2, and beyond, if I had to guess, most of the U.S. and Europe, as well as the more developed parts of Asia, will be vaccinated by then. This shows us where Arcturus's market opportunity will be. They will have the opportunity to reduce costs when vaccinating less developed countries in Africa because they do not require the cold chain infrastructure that Pfizer, BioNTech, or Moderna's vaccines do. This allows them to gain market share even after the U.S. is vaccinated, which I don't think many analysts are pricing in right now. The other market opportunity that they will have is revaccinating people. Here, they will also have an advantage in this area because their shot only uses five micrograms of material versus Pfizer and Biotech's two doses at 30 micrograms or Moderna's two doses at 100 micrograms. This means that even if we assume that all boosters will be a single shot, Arcturus will likely be much cheaper to produce because it uses 1 6th and 1 20th of the material respectively, and this will give them advantages long term. Lastly, they didn't specifically say this, but from what I understand, T cells are better at addressing variants and also may provide longer lasting immunity, and Arcturus's vaccine candidate appears to develop better T cell immunity rather than antibody dependent immunity that the other vaccines seem to cultivate more of, which gives Arcturus yet another advantage in the marketplace. They also released this data sheet, which compares some immunogenicity data from Arcturus's vaccine with that of Pfizer and Biotech's. Arcturus compared favorably in each category, however the days are off by a bit. But I think this shows that Arcturus definitely has an opportunity to provide a viable vaccine to the marketplace sometime this year. Now let's talk about Arcturus's other programs, Arcturus 810 and 032, which are both progressing along nicely. For Arcturus 810, for OTC deficiency, it received approval in Canada to start enrolling subjects in the study, and they are on track to file a CTA for multiple dose study in Q2 of this year. These doses will be the first into people who are actually sick with OTC deficiency after the safety was verified with healthy individuals in a phase 1a trial. With Arcturus 032 for cystic fibrosis, they are on track to file a CTA in Q4, which is also good news. For now, these programs are going to take a backseat to the vaccine when it comes to having a material impact on the financials of the company. However, long term, these programs provide Arcturus with lots of upside opportunity. Real quick, before I close up my thoughts on Arcturus, I want to show you some earnings and revenue predictions from analysts that are stumbled across on the analysis tab of Yahoo Finance. Starting with the revenue estimates for this year, the average comes in at $105 million, which sounds like it would be pretty decent for the rollout of the vaccine, until you realize that they have said they are installing capacity for hundreds of millions of doses a year. Given yes that they will not be delivering hundreds of millions of doses, but $105 million in revenue would only see them delivering 5 million doses at $20 a dose. Even if installed capacity was for 200,000 vaccines per year, the lowest it could be, and still have them say hundreds of millions of doses, and they ran for the last month of the year, and they had not stockpiled any, they would still produce 16 million doses, well above the 5 million doses. That's a lot of ifs to only get to 16 million doses, and for this reason, I still think there are many upgraded forecasts to come, which will leave upside for the stock, even in the short term. For 2022, the average forecast is $483 million in revenue, and at $20 a dose, that would still only work out to 24 million doses for the whole year of 2022. Additionally, I still think they may be able to charge more per dose, considering it costs $40 a dose to be vaccinated by the Pfizer vaccine, two doses at $20 and $50 to $74 to be vaccinated with the Moderna treatment, two doses at $25 to $37. I still think that they may be able to charge more than these companies because a one-shot vaccine is less costly for governments to administer and will be more effective as nobody has to come in for a second dose. I've heard rumors of a price tag around $50 to $70 per dose, but to be conservative for our estimates, let's say they charge $30 a dose, which would put them well below the cost to vaccinate someone with either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. And let's say that they only manage to produce the 200 million doses next year 
in 2022. That would still leave us with $6 billion in revenue, which is much higher than even the high announced estimate of $1.8 billion in sales. So there's obviously a huge upside there. Looking at the earnings analysis real quick, most analysts think that they will lose money again this year, and I think that is reasonable. But looking to 2022, the average estimate is a whopping $8.07 a share. Also, take a look at that high estimate of $34 a share, which would just be absolutely insane. And we'll put their PE ratio if Arcturus was still trading in the 40s of about one. Also, with the current stock price in the 40s and falling quickly, you'd be buying a stock at five times 10 months out forward earnings. If you gave this $8 a share in earnings and an 18 PE ratio, you'd be looking at a $144 stock, over 3.5x in one year. Obviously, analysts think this will be a one-time thing or else the stock will be trading much higher. However, I see it differently. Maybe they don't do $8 a year in earnings from here on out from the COVID vaccine, but I think that we may need booster shots from years to come. And Arcturus, with their superior platform, I think may have the opportunity to capture some of this market and generate reliable cash flows to fund their development of other programs. Finally, for my conclusions, I am more bullish than ever in Arcturus. I get more bullish every day that they get closer to the vaccine being available and the price stays this low. Also, I've never been more sure that they have the premier platform for the late stage vaccinations of less developed countries, as well as for the endemic stage of the coronavirus. Their other programs are progressing nicely, and they have about 500 million in the bank, enough cash for two years of operation, not including any profits from the COVID vaccine. Long term, they have the best technology platform to build on going forward, and I think these three current programs are just the beginning for this company. In the short term, and I never think short term, I've never been so bullish about a company. I see crazy upside in the short term with the impending rollout of their vaccine. Investors won't be able to ignore their earnings, which I think will be closer to a billion in 2022, rather than the roughly 200 million or so that analysts are projecting. Of course, there is risk with my projections almost solely being based off in the short term on their ability to roll out their vaccine effectively. Even still, I would love to buy more today at these levels. But with the spending spree of have on, I don't have much money left, so it would have to go to about 35 for me to want to pick up more. I've also been looking at some options. I'm interested in the September 17, 130 strike calls, but I would be even more interested if I can get those for a December strike when their vaccine will be rolled out and being delivered, but it would have to be for a similar strike price, and I would love for it to be around a $2 premium. If I could get this, I'd have to pick some contracts up, despite how against short-term thinking I am. While I am extremely bullish short-term, the focus must remain on the 10-year horizon where I could easily see their platform propelling their valuation much higher down the road. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of Arcturus in the comments below. Where am I off in my assessment and what's your price target? Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. My goal is to get to 1,000 subs by June 1st and I'd love to have you along for the ride. Thanks again for watching and have a great rest of your day.